All right, we're live. Um, <clears throat> welcome, everybody, to another uh, YouTube series. This one's going to be running a little bit longer. I've given up on the other uh, historical uh, solitaire campaign, Barbarossa. It was just proving a little bit too easy for most of the missions, barring one or two missions aside. Uh, it was just it was just too easy, so I'm going to give up on that one. I'm going to return to Stalingrad, which is uh, something I really uh, enjoy playing. And from a solitaire perspective, we'll be, we're going to be playing Valor of the Guards. Now, we're going to be playing uh, Campaign Game 4, which is the full, uh, I believe it's two weeks of um, of game. Um, covering right from 14 September all the way to, uh, let me see, uh, 27 September of 1942. Um, yeah, so uh, we're going to be playing uh, this. Now, what does that mean? Uh, we'll get into that. Ex uh, well, we'll cover that right now, may as well. So for those of you that don't know, uh, a guy by the name of Tom Warren, ASLer, uh, posted this on Game Squad Forum, and he since uh, submitted this to uh, Multiman Publishing for purposes of publishing. Um, <clears throat> it was supposed to come out in a, in a annual magazine, ASL Annual. But uh, that fell through, or for whatever reason, it just never happened. And now MMP offers this on their website, and you can see the link down below if you want to uh, play along. So what uh, Mr. Morin has done is come up with rules using the solitaire system, which if you followed my other videos, uh, you'll have seen uh, most of them. There'll be a couple of changes, because given Val of the Guards and the way it goes, you almost have to make changes. So that's what these first... Uh, two pages really are is subtle tweaks to the SAL rules and, uh, and things like that. We'll get into that as we encounter them so you're not too overwhelming. But <clears throat> these rules are quite complete. They have your standard solitaire rule modifications. Interesting. Um, you've also got campaign game information. So if you want to play the Valor of the Guards campaign games, if you own the box set, you can uh, use uh, them in a solitaire format um, if that's your uh, forte which obviously it is mine uh, <clears throat> so he has rules for setup um, uh, rules that the enemy forces will use during the refit phase process of a campaign game again if you've never played that I highly encourage you to pick up Valor of the Guards I believe it's still available from MMP um, if you're, you know, a solitaire or a ASL fan anyways, you probably already own it. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you'll have a quick appeal, understand the appeal to the, uh, playing the campaign game itself. So he also includes several custom tables, which for the most part are tweaks of the existing solitaire ASL tables, uh, specific to 1942 Stalingrad. Um, so a lot of the uh, changes in terms of squad availability and guns, especially uh, your AT guns and AA guns and such like that, are all, um, let alone uh, anti-armored armored assets, are limited to what's be generally available in uh, the Valor of the Guards campaign game. And of course he has the random event tables, which you kind of need. And then finally there's several missions you can play with a historical company. Uh, if you want to continue a series, as a matter of fact, my own uh, 194th Infantry Regiment of the uh, 71st Infantry Division, Wehrmacht, uh, uses these four missions at the latter part of the uh, campaign um, to go through Stalingrad. So, <clears throat> um, again, you can use these as individuals or uh, put them together as part of a campaign. Uh, all in all, uh, I really like what Mr. Warren's done with these rules. And we're going to use them. And uh, this is going to be uh, <clears throat> the basis for a set of rules written for the larger Red Barricades game, which I'm thinking of trying after this one's finally complete, which could take a couple months to play through. So you'll see that on my uh, on my channel as we get to that. So uh, look forward to that. So that's basically the rules for the Solitaire Valor of the Guards. Um. Normal campaign setup. Again, uh, I'm going to go with the premise that uh, most of you have played this campaign, so you understand the basics of what's going on. If you want more explanations, by all means, comment down below, and I'll release another video to uh, 
maybe going more in depth of what, uh, what you're looking at, if it's confusing to you. Uh, this, so this is the campaign roster, and it's going to be kept day by day. Here you can see we're playing campaign game four, this column right here, which goes the way to 27 night uh, 09. There's two spaces because there's a daytime and a nighttime scenario that could happen on each day. Typically, the Russians attack at night. Um, that's their strength. And um, less so the Germans. Um, the Germans tend to be lax, staying in their shell holes. And they, uh, they, they will not be attacking at night, uh, as far as I can tell. Anyways, we'll see how that one goes. But uh, the, the Knights belong to the Russians. And that, that's one way for them to gain ground. So as a result, what you'll probably see is uh, probably a 60-40, maybe a 75-25 split of daytime to nighttime assaults. 75-60% would be from the German perspective, and the other side would be from the Russian uh, as a night counterattack. Um, there's likely going to be a counterattack on the night of the 14th, given the modifiers that the Russians have. It makes perfect sense. Initial German push into the city and uh, the Russians uh, counterattack to defend themselves. But again, we'll get to that later on uh, as we go through the mission. So you're looking at here is the, uh, as I said, the campaign roster. It's got everything you need to know. Uh, EC or mild. Uh, clear skies with a mild breeze from the southwest. Uh, sorry, they're dry. <clears throat> Um, you can see my purchases. Um, what those refer to is inside the Valor of the Guards rules. You have uh, campaign purchases. Basically, the chart looks like this. And the letter codes indicate one of these purchases. So the purchases I bought for this game are two infantry companies, of which I'm only allowed to get two per day. Uh, and these are the limits for each of the different entry codes. So I'm limited to basically uh, 11 rifle companies be purchased over the uh, uh, what, 13 days. Uh, <clears throat> not even that. Uh, actually, no, that's right. Uh, 14 days or so, the two weeks that it takes. I'm only limited to producing, uh, purchasing, I should say, 11 rifle companies. And you'll see uh, selling rods a meat grinder if you weren't aware. Um, We'll be going through those readily. Um, so I bought two of those for the first day of the assault. I've also bought several artillery pieces. There's a, uh, um, I have a module of uh, 100, which I've already got free. I purchased a rocket battery to uh, help clear off some suspects and cause some carnage. I've also picked up a couple of offboard observers just so that uh, uh, because I'm going to be starting primarily off board, I don't really have height elevation and it makes sense to purchase a third level observer to do uh, fire missions as we go. Um, and I've also purchased two aerial bombardments, which are those are basically a, uh, a three, a, well, a two hex circle of the bombardment rules in chapter C of the uh, of the rule book, which we're going to get into first things first. Well, that's basically the reinforcement group chart, and uh, obviously the Russians have their own, which will not be applicable to us because the Salter rules are going to put the uh, play the part of using this chart. So we won't won't see any Russian results like that. Uh, so yeah, so what I've purchased a, a, a noble warfare uh, battery, two offboard observers, two aerial bombardments, and then two rifle companies. That gives me four uh, CPP to purchase uh, stuff for the next game. And again, you'll see that happen in between the scenarios, uh, what happens there. So these are some other uh, parameters I've rolled up for the mission. The Russians start off with the three ELR. And again, if you've never played this campaign game, your, your ELR is going to fluctuate based on how aggressive you are. Uh, it's usually going to decrease. Sometimes it might go up. Uh, their initial... Uh, uh, status is going to be idle, which means they're going to stay in place and let me come to them. They do have a five sniper, which is uh, um, obviously getting close to that midpoint of your average dice rolls, so it's going to be interesting. And they also got booby trap level A, which basically means an 11 or 12 on any kind of task check. And the Germans have uh, 
triggered a booby trap, so it's going to be a pain in the butt. And finally, activation code of three. Um, RE numbers you can see there, four or five, and the, the enemy get three, again, just to, to help them out. They get three RE numbers, whereas the friendly side only gets two, so I get a four or five, and they get a five, six, seven. And you roll that as part of the wind die roll at the beginning of every turn, and that side, if you roll that number, then you'll get a random event and we'll refer to the applicable chart. So the AC of three is going to be interesting. It's going to be uh, uh, basically it's going to modify up to a four because there's a lot of stone and rubble and that's going to give you a plus one to the activation die roll. Plus if there's another Russian unit within two hexes that's another plus one. So you're looking at a four or five in general for an activation roll which means more than likely we're going to get a lot of Russians. Uh, Number-wise, you're looking at 322 of the black suspect counters in idle uh, uh, attitude. And there's 193 reserve, which are basically, uh, they stay where they are. They're all ground level. And it's only when you become within a certain range and activate them that they begin to do something. But they're basically going to be there in depth in case, for whatever reason, I'm lucky enough to push through without Germans. Uh, there's not just a, a wide open march to the river. All right, so again, my purchases, you can see here. Uh, I've re-rolled these companies several times so I can get a, a uh, at least a full uh, status for most of the companies. It took me several re-rolls, uh, which again, you can think of that as gaming a system, but um, I think it took me three or four rolls to get this layout. So basically I've got two rifle companies that are uh, uh, what's the word there, uh, slight, lightly depleted, um, <clears throat> the remainder are full. And there's also one of the Stoss troops, which is the uh, 548, um, uh, not really sappers, but uh, they're carrying demo charges and LMGs. One of those is depleted as well. Everything else is full. Uh, the Neville Warfare has a pre-registered hex and it has plentiful ammo, which means when it comes to the uh, OBA cards, I get 10 for the uh, for the fire mission and three three red <clears throat> my normal that should be 100 I think it's 100 or is it 150 can't even remember yeah 100 um, <clears throat> so my number were for 10 black three red in the draw pile and the 100 plus OBA has eight and three and the offboard observer hexes are uh, a twenty for the um, uh, the one hundred, and then it's uh, a thirty for the uh, the uh, Nebel for rocket OBA. They're basically off board, but you use that hex as a line of sight marker, so you can measure line of sights from that location. Um, basically, once the Nebel for drops down this, uh, you know, again two tile barrage. Uh, it does it for the FFP and it, one and FFP two, and then it's done. Uh, then that uh, fire mission is used up, but I'm hoping to cause a lot of carnage and damage in that uh, that area. So I'm only really going to have the 100, and depending on how things are activated, will determine whether or not I actually get a chance to use it, or whether or not I just uh, use it in the next turn, uh, the next scenario, I should say. All right, so let's look at my setup <clears throat> now. Um, I've already played this mission, this campaign game, twice before with varying results. So uh, the, the res results were the same. The Germans had overwhelming victory. So I'm going to be implementing some rules uh, to uh, uh, to offset that. Um, <clears throat> the um, One of the things I made a mistake on from the last previous games was these two groups of reinforcements this one and this one um, if you look closely at the little text here uh, they actually don't come on right away there's a delayed effect the reason why is historically only the center the uh, 194th was in position to pursue its objectives and the 191st and the uh, I can't remember the other one 213 I think it was were delayed a little bit in their approach and that's what these units represent. So up in the north, you have uh, two rifle companies and a Stoss troop. They can only enter the game when I roll a reinforcement die roll, one die, less than the current turn. 
of which there's going to be eight in the initial scenario. All right. Um, in the first playthrough, I basically lined them up in, in A and B, and uh, they were they never should have been on the board in the first place, which made it probably a lot easier than it would have been. Similarly, in the south, uh, these guys were a little bit more delayed. It's a two dice die roll less than the turn number, so they may not even make it on board. Uh, but more than likely, they're not going to come on to uh, near the end, maybe turn six or seven, depending on how lucky my die roll is. <clears throat> So my plan of attack was going to look like this originally, but now I have to adjust that <clears throat> because KG1, Camp Group 1, and Camp Group 4 are basically going to be delayed. My assault is going to be uh, limited on the left and right flanks. So um, KG2 and 3 are still going to go ahead. KG2 has an objective of a second railway station right here at the tip of the arrow, and or if they can reach these factory buildings on the edge of... Uh, uh, Kalmanistishskaya, part of my butchering of the Russian name. Uh, the streets here were uh, along the buildings in preparation for defending against a Russian night attack. <clears throat> KG2 is going to be going for railway station 1. And uh, they're also going to try and push through to this square and line up along the street. And then KG1 and 4 were going to clear up the, their flanks. But again, KG1 might make some headway. But KG4 may or may not even enter play. But their objective is going to be a children's home, which is located here in the vicinity where I'm waving my mouse. Um, yeah, so so here's the children's home. This here is uh, uh, Railway Station Stalingrad 1, which is the objective of Camp Group 3. And this is the other railway station and factory buildings that are going to be at Camp Group 2's responsibility. Hopefully they can reach those and get in position to uh, receive uh, Russian assault. We'll see how that goes. <clears throat> uh, all right, so the rules I'm going to implement are basically looking like this. So this is my post on uh, Game Squad Forum. If you haven't been there, I recommend highly for all things ASL. There's a solitaire section where they, you'll find this. But these are the rules I'm going to be implementing. Um, <clears throat> basically, I found it a little bit too easy for the Germans because once I pushed through the initial line, uh, enemy counterattacks were limited, if almost you know non-existent. And the uh, because of the nature of the reserve forces, um, if I'm not activating reserves, they're they're effectively useless. And so I was able to push, make significant advances in most of the daytime scenarios. So we're going to change that. Basically, every enemy prep fire phase, um, <clears throat> there's a chance that they get an artillery strike. We'll get into the specific Valor of the Guard solitaire rules for that. But you'll see what I'm talking about shortly. But as far as I roll, I'm also going to roll for a potential RE that gives a local counterattack, which, just like the name implies, means a variable number of suspects are going to go on the offensive and they might be able to retake some ground rather than just sit there and wait for the Germans to approach them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, uh, regarding the artillery strike, um, the rules in solitaire for artillery strikes are really random. There's no accuracy. Um, basically, once you place your initial hex, you're rolling a die for direction and die for distance, no having. And uh, it's just blopping all over the board randomly. I have no idea where it is. I'm going to play it more like an actual OBA module. Uh, so I'm going to use accuracy die rolls. There will be corrections. So basically, if I move an FFE three hexes, it's only going to deviate by one. It's not going to do a full uh, uh, potential six move. Um, I'm not going to be using any battery access or chit draws. That will still be handled by the SASL system. And they'll be limited to a maximum of two um, <clears throat> fire four effects at any one time uh, during a mission. <clears throat> um, when the Russians go on the attack, uh, here's something else. The normal rules that Mr. Morin wrote up only has two rows of idle enemy, sorry, of enemy, some of which will go on the attack, depending on how you roll. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to add three rows to that. So There's going to be five rows of black suspect counters, of which the first two rows may or may not attack. This is going to give the enemy a little bit more depth 
so that again once I defeat that initial counterattack because SAS being what it is and the randomness of the die rolls there's no guarantee of what's going to happen and so it, they, the attack could easily be rebuffed um, <clears throat> and that means uh, Germans can go on the offensive and take a lot of ground but by having this uh, in-depth defense on the enemy side we're going to be able to counteract that hopefully and there just won't be a cakewalk uh, finally, I'm going to increase the chances of a nighttime counterattack just because I killed so many Russians every time I played that it reduces the chance of a counterattack that night. Um, <clears throat> so I've just bumped that up by one just to make it more likely that there's going to get their, I think it's a maximum of eight that they get in the campaign. Um, just let me confirm that. I think it's a maximum number of eight that they can do for uh, for counterattacks. For campaign game four, they're allowed yeah eight <clears throat> eight attack checks uh, chits. Uh, the way it would normally work is each side when you're going face to face, uh, each side would pick what they're going to do either uh, be idle or attack. You put them face down, you reveal at the same time, and that would determine what kind of uh, scenario you'd be playing. Either it's an idle day, it could be a dual attack, or a German or Russian assault. And Russian assaults are primarily going to be at night, so they're only going to have eight attacks in the two week span. <clears throat> and um, just to, uh, um, I think it's more fitting for the Russians that they attack at night. Uh, definitely their strength. They get more more perks. Uh, if they attack during the daytime, they're just going to get shot off by the Germans. Again, because the way that the salt air system is set up, it's just going to lead to that kind of chaos. So uh, they have eight attacks, and I've just increased their chances of doing a nighttime counterattack. So we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> and I may uh, overrule the dice roll. If it seems fitting, I'll throw in a, in a counterattack, even when they may not. <clears throat> Finally, uh, this last bullet, um, there's the action tables that you normally roll for an action for each of the enemy units once they uh, pass their, their uh, panic check, I suppose. Um, what that looks like is this table here. So... Vehicles have their table, infantry has their table, support weapons and guns have their own table. But basically, rather than do something along these lines, um, because again, the randomness of the rule, this is designed by the game, uh, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, and again, it leads to some really funky results sometimes. <clears throat> so um, we're going to not, we're not going to do that. And basically, they're going to roll for panic as normal. But when they pass that test, I'm basically going to play them in what's in their best interest. So they're going to stay and fortify the building locations if they so choose. They're going to I'll be able to be, do better picking of the target um, so they're not just wasting their fire. Uh, if they see a likely avenue to approach a building, maybe reconquer some territory, then they'll, uh, they'll do that. Um, yeah. So what else can I talk about for mission setup? Um, this is what it looks like. You can see they start off with a lot of black on the board, as I said, 322. And these ones in gray are the reserve counters. Again, they're going to be non-effective for the most part until at such point they get activated by, uh, by the rule system as we go. Germans initially are confined to a very small setup area on board, which is basically these locations here. A20 to A, uh, I think it's A40. Um, A, A, B20 to A, B40. Yeah. And so um, uh, everything else is going to be starting off board. And like I said before, both flanks are going to be delayed on their, uh, their entry. So we'll see how that goes. All right, I think that's enough rambling. So let's get into this. And uh, again, if you guys have any questions about what's going on or you don't understand something for some reason, 
by all means leave comments down below and I'll try and answer them as best possible. Uh, if there's a lot of questions, maybe I'll release a follow-on video to, uh, uh, to answer them. But again, I need that, yeah, questions from you if you want me to do that kind of stuff. All right, so it's turn one. The Germans are on the attack. First thing we need to do before anything, we have to resolve these three aerial bombardments that I have. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, how do we do that? All right, so <clears throat> basically, much like an, uh, an OBA fire mission, this is going to be a 2x radius around this dot. We initially do an accuracy dial to see if it's on target. So for this first one, let's see if it lands on target, a one or two, and it's on target. It's not, and then we roll direction and extent. Uh, so first dice direction, three for two. One, two. So that's going to be the center of a two hex uh, bombardment. All right, so it's going to be interesting. So we got to do buildings first, and then we do, and this follows the rules for uh, Chapter C, Bombardment. Um, where is it? Bombardment. Uh, chapter C, 1-8, Bombardment. Um, <clears throat> actually, let me look at the, uh, the newer rules. Alrighty, bombardment. So the 2x radius, as you can see, uh, each of the uh, hexes from the FFE is going to be uh, suffering the effects. Um, <clears throat> so first things first, um, buildings and then the occupants of it have to roll for... Uh, more for results. So this is a uh, suspect in the debris, so there's not going to be any building that has to worry about it. Debris can't catch fire. Um, it's basically the remnants of buildings and tracks and cars and all the rest of it, the debris. So I just have to roll for the, uh, the occupants itself. So this is going to be a straight up uh, on the um, uh, a morale check. So they have a morale of seven. And uh, if I break that, then um, they'll be activated. So these guys are activated potentially on a three or less, on a four. So the target hex, they're gone. Uh, let's do I-7. Again, that's a building. So the building has to do a morale check, which it passes. And now the uh, troops in the building um, will get a plus two to their morale. Plus three, my mistake, it's a stone building. Nope, so they're activated. Yep. All right, 10. <clears throat> 10 on the activation. Uh, 10, squad, fortification, and a support weapon. Plus 2, suspects and hold attitude. So that 10's a 12, so it's going to be a fortified gun and a half squad. Yep. All right. <clears throat> Uh, 
Uh, okay, so let's do this. Uh, so we got the squad type is a eight, which is going to be a. Uh, let's see, the date is plus six, so that's going to be a fourteen, which makes it an NKVD. One to two, it's a six to eight, so it's going to be a four to six NKVD. Uh, the six to eight with the uh, hammer and sickle is your in. KVD, but that only really applies to the 628s. These guys are basically normal conscripts. And uh, because I'm anal that way, what I tend to do is I keep track of what activates so that um, <clears throat> I have a good idea of what's what and I can keep some kind of stats on uh, what's going on. So I7. All right, so what's the gun? It is a nine. 45 long AT gun. That's a good line of sight there, right down the road. Uh, let's go like that. That would make sense, I suppose. All right, and they rolled a 12, <clears throat> modified to a nine, which is still a fail. So these guys are gonna be uh, broken and disrupted. And the, um, I'll have to do a separate roll, I guess, because I think it's uh, only per hex. Uh, sorry, uh, I don't think it's just one roll per hex. Well, this is actually a two check, so definitely they failed. Uh, let's see who that box car is applied to. One to three will be the uh, gun crew. So it was the gun crew that's broken. Um, you're not broken yet. Let's see, uh, you get a two morale check with a plus three building. A net positive of plus one, so a seven or less. And you're broken. Okay. I7 is fine. Uh, shell hole is already there. Shell hole is already there. Possible shell hole in J9. There might actually be a flame in that building. Um, just let me confirm. Um, if you've never played Valor of the Guards, they introduced roofless buildings. So if you look here on the map, for example, this building here with the white dot has a roof, but you can clearly see that 011 does not. So the building that we're talking about here, um, oh, wait a minute, that wasn't a building. Uh, two morale check on the six, we bring it down to a four. They fail, so they are going to be disrupted. Um, I thought that was a building for some reason. What is that? Just debris. Okay, never mind. Uh, and we already said debris can't be kindled. So J9, Earl of 12, there's going to be shell holes. Uh, Oh, I jumped the gun there. Let's go to um, J8. Uh, seven morale check takes a two check. Plus two for the shell hole would be a seven, so it's pinned. But uh, they're not broken, so are they activated? No, they're not. And then I-9, uh, they're going to be broken as well if anything is there. Nope. 
shell hole already exists, H7. They are good. Two morale check would be a five. Debris is no terrain effect, so that's only, uh, they're fine, so they're good. And then we go to the second ring, uh, shell hole. No shell hole yet, J6. This X here. Um, uh, first floor. And that would be a, that is inside a building. Roofless. Uh, no, it has a roof. Okay, that's good. So we'll actually get the um, the bonus for the level for the ground floor, guys. At any rate, the top floor rolled a six plus three is a uh, is a nine, and minus two is a seven, so they're good. Ground floor needs an eight or less to uh, be fine. And they're fine. Oh, the building should have gone first. Uh, stone building, I think, is a morale level of nine. Oof, made it, just barely made it. This building here, the building itself, is rubbled, which means these guys are gone. Yep, they are something. Plus two is a nine, that should be a squad still. Mine's a squad. That's going to be a end of KVD 426. We're buried now under the. Uh... Uh, under the rubble. See if we can find a better one. There we go. Stone rubble. Well, that's good, at least. Uh, all right, so let me go to uh, K9. Building morale check is good. Suspects on the ground floor. Uh, this is roofless. No, they do have a roof. So they'll be at a plus one, plus four, minus two with a plus two uh, on the morale check. So nine or less, and they'll be fine. Yep, so they're good. Uh, J9 shell oil creation. <clears throat> I10. They're in a building, so building first. They're, the building is fine. And again, a nine or less, and they'll pass the... Uh, no, wait, that's only a one-story. Um, an eight or less, and they'll be fine. They're good. This is a roofed one and a half story building, so building first is fine. Upper floor, they need a eight, ten, so they are they failed. Uh, it is an activation. Plus two is a 12, is a squad fortification and a gun. I never rolled fortification for that. Five, no fortification. All right, so this building is fortified. What would that mean? It would be a plus four. Minus two is a plus two, it would be a nine or less, so they still fail. Um, yeah, so let's see what kind of squad it is for here. Uh, 11 plus 6 is 5 plus 6 is 11, so it's going to be NKVD and it's another 426. You're going to see a lot of these on the first day. Uh, NKVD were uh, quite prevalent in uh, the orders of battle. 
So another 426. Um, gun is going to be a 45 long AT. And that is going to be fortified level one. Which means the ground floor will be fortified as well. <clears throat> All right, so that's a fail. So let's see who that uh, nine applies to. Um, the failed morale check. One to three is a gun crew. So it's again the gun crew, so they're broken. And the A plus two to this morale check for the 426. Uh, they are good. Yeah, 426 is fine, and the uh, but the crew is not. Which is good, because if I bring armor on, they would have a nice unobstructed view to that so that's good I got to remember to keep that uh, keep them suppressed all right ground floor they are uh, now at a um, are they the same so a nine or less to pass they fail it is activation 13 is an SPG So propelled guns, so it's basically going to be a dug and tank um, in a fortified building location. Oy vey. And it starts, so six kind of tank is it, is a T-34 M41. Um, I think I just used a turret. That would make sense. I'll just get rid of those. Maybe after the fact, I'll write down the uh, the stats of what's actually there. Uh, all right, so they're buttoned up. <clears throat> um, well, that's interesting. What does that mean for... Morale level of nine. Um, so what does that look like? Be fortified building location, but they're in a tank, so how would that work? I'll just keep that there for now. Uh, a fortified building location is a plus four to the morale, minus two for the morale check. Oh, sorry, a normal morale check. But I don't think vehicle will get the effect of the terrain around it.
No, they do not get uh, terrain effects. So it's a straight up nine. So it failed by two, which means the vehicle is actually destroyed. If it would have failed by three, then it would be a burning wreck. Reading the rules here, the uh, yeah, okay, so it's going to be a uh, interesting. Uh, crew survival is a five. Crew does not survive. I'm pretty sure I did that correctly. If you think or if you know I did that incorrectly, I'm sure you let me know. Uh, the effects of a dug and tank with an aerial bombardment in a fortified building location. Um, by reading the rules, my reading vehicles take a nine morale check because it's a closed top AFV. There's no terrain effect uh, as a reverse modifier. Um, and it failed by two, which meant it was destroyed and then subsequently failed its uh, crew survival as well. So, <clears throat> oops, I sent that to the wrong one. I don't think that should be nine. It's a mobilized dug and tank. Oh well. We'll figure that out later. The dug and tank that's been destroyed. Uh, meanwhile, moving on, we have G9, another building. So morale check for the building. The building is now rubbled. Uh, that is not activation. We have suspects in the debris field. Oh, I failed to do you. Huh. All right, I'll get to, let's do uh, H7. Apparently I uh, overlooked them. Uh, that isn't a building, so let's do the morale check for the building. A nine, and I think that is sufficient for a stone building. Yep. So the building is fine. Um, Occupants are not, and they are a six. Six is a squad and a fortification. Uh, okay, so let me back up a bit. So this is a fortified building location. So I need to make a die roll. If it's a snake eyes, it's actually a battalion strong point. It's not. Uh, it's a feature unique to Valor of the Guards. It basically would have given them increased morale. Basically a, like a fanatic bonus for being inside the building. Um... All right, uh, meanwhile, where were we? So we did a uh, morale check for for you guys and you activated a four, four is a squad. Squad is a uh, NKVD, four, two, six.
I roll a 10. They needed a 6 uh, plus 1, so they failed by... Th no. That would be a 7. They rolled a 10. So they're only broken. They're not disrupted. Now we go back to uh, G8. Um, just the squad itself. So morale check for that counter. And it fails. It is activated. Oof. It's not good. Twelve is a squad fortification and a gun. <clears throat> All right, so squad. It's gonna be probably a four four seven. Maybe a five two seven. Yeah, it's a five two seven. Fortified. Nope. Uh, what I roll on for fortified is the uh, fortification table right here. Basically, a five plus is um, uh, no and no fortification. Now, if it's a gun in an upper uh, upper building level, then um, if there's a fortification roll, then it becomes fortified, like happened to here. All right, uh, so G8 is a 4-2, sorry, no, what do we do now? C, G7. Um, no, we didn't. <clears throat> that was G8, we just did. Squad fortification and gun. Squad was a 5-2-7. Where did I put him down? Uh, fortification was none, and the gun is a 12. 76 infantry gun. All right, one, two, three is the gun crew. So again, the gun crew is failing morale checks all the time. And the five, two, seven. Would be uh, broken as well. And then finally, we're into G7. That is a building. Uh, just a one story. Morale check for the building. The building is good. Morale check for the suspect. The plus three with the minus two is the net plus one would be a pass. So you're good. So this bombardment is done. That was one. And now we'll do the second one. And we haven't even started yet. This is going to be a long game. <clears throat> All right, aerial bombardment. Accuracy die roll, it's not accurate. It deviates six for five. One, two, three, four, five. Everything within two. Uh, C14 potential shell hole. Uh, you guys here. Uh, the wooden. Rail cars have failed. Uh, they're not on fire, but they're rubbled, which basically means that would be destroyed as well. Yes, it is. NKVD 16 is good uh, C17 they failed a morale check they are activated in KVD 426 
broken. All right, so that one's done. Third one. Accuracy die roll, it's not accurate. Deviates one for one, which is pretty decent, I'd say. All right, target hex. Stone Rubble doesn't have to take a morale check, but the uh, squad definitely does. And it is good. Yeah, it would be a, uh, a net plus one, so you're good there. Target Hex is fine. G28 is fine. Plus one. H28 is good. 29. It's a rubbled car. Uh, so they failed. Not activated. G30. It's a debris hex. Uh, so just a squad. Squad pass. Fine. Um, F29. Car is fine. F28. Suspect. Oh, the car is fine. The suspect is fine as well. Now we go to G27. Uh, good. Might be heat of battle. Oh, nothing is there. <clears throat> Activation would have been a heat of battle. That's why I did that. Uh, H27 is not shell creation. Basically, if it's a boxcar, uh, what are we at here? T28, or sorry, I28. Uh, well, they're broken, whatever that is. 9 plus 2 is an 11. Is this two squads, leader fortification, and support weapons? So, two squads. So, four, two, seven, and a five, sorry, four, four, seven, and a six, two, eight, or uh, and KVD. Okay, a little mix matching. I'm gonna make that a four, two, six uh, conscript, and it's gonna be an NKVD unit. So, that's on the commissar table. Four. Plus one, minus one cancel is an eight plus one. All right, support weapon. ATR to yeah that's an ATR all right the roll to see who um, got the uh, 10 on the morale track top down one two three so you guys both failed Both broken, but not disrupted. 426 is good. Plus one. Yeah. 426 is good, but now the task check to see, uh, and it is pinned.
and this should be a lumber yard. So lumber yard is rubbled. Lumberyard. Yeah, it's a rubble. So was anything uh, there? No. And we have T30. They are good, H30, your wooden cars, so the rail cars are good. The uh, squad is not, yes, they are activated as a dug and tank again. Dug and tank is a T34. Yep. All right, uh, this tank is going to be destroyed as well. Um, what did it fail by? You had no modifier, you're a nine, you failed by two, so you're just destroyed. Uh, five or less for the crew survival. Crew does not survive. So yeah, you're going to be... Uh, Never know for scrounging purposes, it might be a uh... might be able to get something out of it. So we'll just leave the tank there for now. Okay, um, well, we got shell holes and debris there, so then we do uh, F30 boxcars, and then the squad itself is good. And plus two is a 12, is a squad, fortification, and a gun. Squad is a NKVD 426, which is now going to be battle hardened to a uh, 527. Fortification. Um, <clears throat> I don't think of. You can get a fortification in a uh, real car hex.
ground level railroad okay Well, the rules for railroads don't say anything about what kind of train is in there, even though I'm directed to this entry. Um, oh, okay, so pertaining to paved ground level roads. Oh, I see. Got it. Um... So basically no, why didn't I just say no? Uh, so no entrenchments, no fortification. Um, our pillbox is entrenchment. No, they're not. So that's only trenches. So it could be a fortified building location. So I'm going to say there's no uh, no entrenchment that can be there because uh, I rolled a four. Four is an entrenchment, not a pillbox. So uh, there's nothing that can be there. So the gun type is a ten. Is a thirty-seven long AA. Okay. All right, so uh, squad crew. So again, the crew. All my gun crews are uh, breaking. Uh, the squad itself. Now it gets a uh, straight up zero, so seven or less to break. Pinned. E30 to see if it rubbles. No. Uh, E29, see if that rubbles. Yes. Uh, what is a six? Wrong, a four. 
two squads again. One, two. One, two. Leader is a six. A plus one is a seven, eight, zero, potential commissar. No commissar, so it's a, an eight, zero. And they are dead. And then lastly, we have E28, rail car morale check. I believe that's uh, not good enough. Failed it by one. Alrighty, <clears throat> well, you're nothing. But you are rubbled. And then, uh, oh, wait, there's one more uh, F27 rail car. Uh, you're rubbled as well. So, what is it? It is a. I already rolled activation, sorry. 10, 12. Squad fortification gun. Squad is a 426. Gun is an 8, which is a. 45 long AT, double long. And they're all dead because the building got rubbled. Now that seems excessively crazy to me. Uh, again, leave in the comments below if you think that's crazy <laughs> or if I did that incorrectly, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. You think of the building first, if the building fails, it's rubbled, and then all the occupants are eliminated. And I believe that's the case. So that's the three uh, aerial bombardments. Um, could have done a lot more. It's pretty effective, the first one. Second one was really effective. A lot of rubble cause. Being in wooden boxcars is probably not the best. Um, I've eliminated several things already. Casualty is not going to be pretty. Where is it? Can't see my casualty bin. Oh well, <clears throat> we'll find out what happened to it later. Uh, so that's the pre-game aerial bombardments that are done. Uh, as I said, somewhat effective, but uh, would have been a lot better if I could have got more suspects eliminated in the center. Well, this is looking quite clear now for the northern or uh, yeah the northern element of Camp Group Three. Um, they got to deal with this and as long as they can keep these uh, NKVD troops broken. But, uh, you know, assuming they can get through this initial wall, they might be able to do some serious damage now that's been cleared up. At any rate, I'm going to stop there. Uh, we're going to break this uh, session up into several parts. I have no idea how many it's going to be each day of the 14 days. So there could actually be potentially 28 maximum scenarios if every day is an attack. You're going to see a couple of vital ones and we'll just bypass those, but you'll um, you get a feel for this campaign if you haven't experienced this kind of thing before. So 
I'm going to have several videos of this. So this is going to be the first one. Part 1 of uh, 14 September 1942. Um, yeah, let me, uh, let me know what you think, guys, down below. We'll see uh, what the first actual turn of prep fire on artillery and movement phase does, what kind of entrance the, uh, the Germans will make into the, uh, into the Russian lines. All right, guys, uh, I'll see you in the next video.